Zohar not only helps prepare students academically for BYU, but also spiritually. Reporter Matt Rascon takes us on a trip to Salt Lake City to see the religious aspect of the Soar experience. Before Soar, everything was falling apart back home. Like these teenagers, Jay Puafisi attended Soar following his junior year in high school. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life if I was going to turn, you know, the wrong way and use drugs, go into gangs and stuff like that. His experience five years ago was not just a summer of academic refinement. A lot of people come to SOAR with the anticipation that it's just for the ACT, but I came to SOAR and it changed my life. Now, five years later, he's back, only not as a student, but as a counselor. I came back because I know I needed to pass it along. And that's exactly what Jay is doing for participants like Winston. Just yesterday, Winston didn't want to be here. Yeah, I want to play football for BYU. And with offers from colleges around the country, he could only think of his future in football. But today, that's all changed. I would really change the new man, thank my parents for everything. I never was thankful for anything. His focus has turned from football star to servant for the Lord. Um, our goal as counselors is to make it a life-changing uh, experience. Yeah. Uh, How do you do that? Through the Spirit. I don't really do anything. The Spirit does everything. Among SOAR's objectives is to identify students that are spiritually prepared to benefit from and contribute to BYU. BYU is not only trying to focus on education by itself, but character building and um, spiritual growth. To help accomplish that objective, Jay and other counselors travel to Salt Lake City with their students. Um, Temple Square, service project, stuff like that. It really brings a spirit into these people's lives, along with BYU. During their visit, students viewed the beautiful art in the conference center, enjoyed its rooftop garden, watched the Mormon Tabernacle Choir rehearse, learned a bit of church history, and their testimonies of the gospel and God's plan for families was strengthened. Um, from day one, they come in all shy. A lot of them don't want to be here. They don't talk. And then by Friday, they don't want to leave. Very spiritual. Actually, like listening to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir in person and the orchestra um, is very spiritual. It made me realize uh, how <clears throat> how important family is and how important it is to get married in the temple and to get sealed to see them again. I was not prepared for this. I. It's a little more spiritual than I thought, and I'm grateful. This was Ramon's first time to Temple Square. I know I said it was a little more than I expected, but that's the better part of it. It's been an experience he will take with him for a lifetime. I have the opportunity to be able to go back to my mom and dad, and to actually change the way, the way I am. Not that I'm a bad child, but it's always room for improvement. To finish off their Salt Lake visit, Jay gathers Winston and the rest of the group for a short devotional. I felt uh, a strong spirit yeah. that touched me, um, something that I've never felt before. Testimonies are born, tears are shed, songs are sung, hearts are touched, and Jay passes on his legacy, helping Soar change lives. They want to be better men, they want to go home, better people. It's because of the things that Soar teaches them, it's because of the things that they learn from the Spirit. Matt Rascone, BYU Weekly.